I'm uh, Mark Blufstein. I'm a chess grandmaster, and uh, I recently joined the board of the Chess Institute of Canada, Canada's leader in teaching chess and life skills. And uh, I'm thrilled to be here today with uh, Marcus Wilker, our director of uh, operations. Um, Marcus, uh, great to have you here today. Uh, how are you doing? Uh, good. Thanks, Mark. How are you? I'm uh, I'm doing very uh, very well. Thank you. Um, and uh, the goal of today's talk is to get to know uh, Marcus uh, much better. And uh, I'll be asking Marcus some questions and uh, and looking forward to learning more about you, Marcus. Does that sound all right? Yeah, yeah sounds good. Perfect. Well, uh, who is Marcus? Tell us uh, a bit about yourself. Um, okay, so I think, uh, like one thing that I think is still kind of part of my identity, um, I, I grew up in an academic family. Um, my dad was a math professor. Um, and then I studied math and philosophy in university and then I was a like a high school teacher for for 14 years so even though now I'm uh you know in in business uh but I still kind of feel like a bit of a, an academic I guess so um and uh, how how did you get into chess Marcus um so I mean I grew up with a lot of games there was a lot of card games board games of various kinds around my house uh like cribbage backgammon you know, and chess was chess was one of them, but it didn't become like my thing the way that it has been since until high school. So, um, in grade nine, uh, I went to Cedarbury uh, Collegiate in Scarborough. There was a teacher there called Mr. Ulysse, and he ran the chess club there. And uh, that was when I started to get into playing chess like almost every day. And chess started to become my thing. And then me and some of my friends joined Scarborough Chess Club. Um, and it's just been something I guess that's been in my life since then as an important thing. Uh, so I learned like how to play earlier, but it didn't really become like uh, the kind of passion I guess that it has been since then. So I've been kind of just like a, an amateur chess player uh, like since then. That, that's, uh, that's amazing. I, uh, as you know, I started learning young at the age of five and I watched chess or did something related to chess every single day since then. Okay. Um, and, uh, it's, uh, it's quite a passion and uh, and we definitely share that love of chess together. Right. I'm very fortunate to have had chess as a big part of my life uh, from a very young age. I know that chess has given me a lot of life skills, including uh, knowing that every one of my moves has an impact right. and that I'm responsible for these moves and uh, that I need to make sure that I think before I move and that applies to chess and to every other uh, area of my life and I'm very fortunate to have gained a lot of my uh, life skills through chess in that regard. And uh, what is uh, your role with uh, the Chess Institute of Canada? Yeah, so yes. I'm uh, Director of Operations. So I'm, uh, I mean, we have a small management team and a lot of some of the stuff I do is just very frontline stuff as well, like answering phone calls or or emails from, from parents or something like that. Um, but I guess my specific role has to do with kind of maintaining our systems and kind of analyzing what we're doing, uh, what we're actually, what actual needs we're, we're meeting, um, what our customer's experience is, what our staff's experience is, and just look at how we're doing things and seeing whether we could be doing those things better, um, whether we're conveying our messages in in a, in a way that uh, gives people the information that they need and, and just whether our systems are smooth, like whether it's, whether it's easy enough for people to find the class that they're looking for or how we could help make those things work better. So just kind of like, uh, I guess, looking at the whole thing and all the little moving pieces that are part of our organization and trying to uh, see how they could improve or how they can change to kind of meet uh, to meet the needs of, of our um, students and in various different contexts where, where we have made, made our programs uh, happen. And uh, what's the most fun part of your job, Marcus? Um, well, I think, I think analysis is, is fun. I mean, I think it's really uh, coming, coming from, from like a math background and a philosophy background. Um, it's really been interesting to me to see like in a business context how some of those kinds of like uh, analysis of a situation where it's not exactly clear what's the right kind of analysis to, to do or what's the right 
kind of metric to apply or what, what you're really trying to understand. Um, and then to sort of find some interesting characteristics, you know, about the audience or about, uh, about our system or about how, how things get used and to just sort of solve those problems um, like concretely. Um, so that's, that's, I think, fun, um, but it's also great. Uh, I think like as a teacher, in some ways I was working very um, obviously closely with my students, but in terms of like the rest of our team, we were sort of just working, each of us was sort of responsible for our own classrooms or something, it wasn't as much. But uh, in, in this organization, in like a management capacity, there's I think, a lot of interaction with people doing different things. And it's great to work with everybody at, at uh, Chess Institute. You, you mentioned all of the operations and the systems within uh, the Chess Institute of Canada, and uh, we're all going through a pandemic right now. Right. The world has changed and mm -hmm. you know, the world has changed drastically. How How has the Chess Institute of Canada adapted to the pandemic? Um, so a few things, like for one thing, we're all working from home now. We essentially like shut down our office. Um, but the other, the, I mean, the big thing, I guess, is that we've adapted our program delivery for online. So the majority of our programs now, uh, kids are at home, although we do have some programs that are that are being projected into a classroom uh, onto the screen in front of the class, and then the kids have their uh, laptops or monitors in front of them um, for individual stuff. But the majority of what we're doing, um, kids are at home on their own devices and being brought together over Zoom like uh, like all of us are doing so much <laughs> these days. Um, and we've we've really, uh, I think the it was a challenge to adapt uh, our product to, to online delivery because one of the things that we really um, believed that we did well and we really wanted to continue to do well, we really thought it was our characteristic is to have these really highly engaging classes. Uh, the, our instructors are very individually engaging to each student in the class and we were kind of worried that over a different medium we weren't going to be able to have that level of engagement and relationship which which allows us to to teach in the way that we do but it's been a, a really uh, great success in seeing the way that our instructors have been able to adapt uh, our delivery to make it work online and they've brought in new tools and we have new audience and it's really been, uh, I mean, there definitely has been a silver lining to to the to the issue in terms of uh, broadening our reach geographically um, and reaching a lot of older kids also. Um, and so it's very. Uh, I mean, I think it's it's been a blessing in in some ways in order for us to like find new ways to to deliver our programs and, and reach new audiences. It's uh, it's definitely been a, an interesting time for, for chess. Uh, I've never seen chess be this popular. Um, right, right. Something right. I get asked about all the time is Queen's Gambit. How, right. how often are you asked about Queen's Gambit and what were your thoughts about the show? Yeah, I really liked that show. Um, I thought that it did um, potentially the best job ever, uh, in at least the things that I've seen, in really kind of glamorizing the game and really bringing the, 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 the drama of a chess game in a, in a relatable way that people can understand. I think uh, a lot of people liked the, the story um, who are not chess players. Uh, and a lot of people liked the, um, just the chess part. I think it, it made a lot of people think about chess differently. Um, so I think, I think that was great. I mean, the whole thing is interesting because chess was already kind of blowing up online just, just because chess works so well online. Like you can play an online game and it's really the full game. There's no like compromise in in the game to put it online. Uh, so it was already, I mean, the chess.com was, was like, has been growing. Twitch has like a huge audience of people watching people play online games. Um, and then within that, Queen's Gambit came and kind of like, picked up what was already like chess hype and just like raised it to the next level. And then uh, there was a lot of stories about the Queen's Gambit too. So the media were like rehyping the, so, I mean, certainly the, it's, it just keeps getting bigger. It'll be really interesting to see once, once uh, chess clubs reopen, 
uh, how much of an impact there is. Um, Cause I think there could potentially be like quite a large um, uh, increase of, of audience for chess. And a lot of that audience is gonna be at, I think a, a much more beginner level than we may have normally seen in, in like chess clubs. So it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how, how you know, the chess clubs adapt to that new audience if it comes and how that audience like maybe changes a little bit the face of chess. Well, last question on my end, what, uh, what do you wish every person in Canada knew about chess? Um, well, from, from, from my point of view, especially, you know, with, with what we're, the work we're doing here at Chess Institute, I think it would be really great if people understood what a fantastic uh, educational tool chess is. Uh, not only what you can teach with chess, like how much you can teach with chess, but how you can teach with chess, like teaching through a game. Um, and not like the game is not just, uh, you know, you're not just gamifying something. It is actually itself a game. And the, the level of enthusiasm that kids have and the, and the way their natural curiosity uh, can be, uh, you, you, don't, you don't have to work hard to get kids interest in chess, like it's just inherently interesting itself. It's a game, it's fun, compete. Uh, and to have learning take place in that, um, I think it's, it's a, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm, I guess I'm a big, a big fan of, of uh, the educational benefits of, of chess. And I really, um, it would be wonderful to see that more widely appreciated um, in Canada as it is in, uh, you know, other places like in Northeast uh, US, Europe. Uh, so I think, uh, I mean, it's an international game and I think Canada has been a little bit behind in, in how much we could use it uh, as an educational tool. And I, I really think it would be great if, if Canadians uh, understood that a little bit better, but that's, uh, <laughs> that's our job too, to, to, uh, to send that message. Definitely, well, uh, thank you very much for, for that. Uh... Marcus, it was great getting to, to know you and really appreciate your, uh, your insights. And uh, thank you everybody for, for watching uh, this uh, video. And uh, if you ever do have questions about the Chess Institute of Canada or uh, want our help, please uh, do reach out.